The collection process is actually very similar, whether it's for XC cell, CTL019, uh, or lysosol. Uh, it's what you do after the collected product. So for XC cell, uh, you, once you collect the product, then you ship it to Kite, and uh, Kite is the company which, uh, which uh, handles XC cell. And um, uh, after that, the, pa the patient is actually enrolled on uh, something called Kite Connect, and uh, through Kite Connect, uh, you can see uh, when, when the product is going to be ready uh, for, for delivery again. For uh, CTL019, after collecting uh, the product, uh, the freeze product, it's, it's cryopreserved at the site where it's collected and then shipped to Novartis. And the patient is enrolled in something called Kim Raya Cares, and that is the portal through which uh, you can uh, look at the, the progress of uh, when the cells are going to be ready for, for delivery. And currently for Lysocell, it's on a clinical trial, and again, uh, the product is collected and after collection, uh, uh, there's a communication with Juno Therapeutics to, for them to receive the fresh product, and then it's processed over there, and they let you know when, uh, when, when, when it'll be ready for, uh, for sending. So two of the products right now are shipped fresh, fresh uh, and one product is cryopreserved and then shipped uh, as, as a frozen, frozen uh, cell. One of the problems with this type of therapy uh, is, so far, at least in clinical trials, but also because of the insurance approval pro uh, process for commercial um, use, especially in Medicare patients, there is a fairly long turnaround time. Uh, in clinical trials, there are slots that we share with our investigators from around the country, and uh, you may have only one slot a month uh, for patients. You might see a patient in you know, September and not have a slot available to December or January for CAR T. Uh, if there's, if you're talking about commercial product, you may see the patient in September, and it may take a couple of months to get the insurance approval, either through commercial insurance or through Medicare. So there is a an issue with uh, what to do with some of these patients while waiting for the cars. And we've tried to evolve a variety of different uh, bridging therapies. Um, it depends on what these patients have had previously, what treatment they've had previously. Uh, we have used sometimes uh, regimens uh, such as gemcitabine, gemcitabine and oxaliplatin or gemcitabine-containing regimens. We've used uh, lenalidomide and an anti-CD20 antibody, either rituxan or sometimes obinutuzumab. Um, and sometimes we just use pulse steroids in order to uh, control the disease while we're waiting. But I think the, the turnaround time currently is longer than ultimately it will be. I think it's going to get shorter. And I think these won't be issues as much of an issue in the future. Uh, certainly, I hope it won't be. But it is, it's a real problem now. And uh, we're always kind of struggling to figure out you know, how to keep things under control while we're waiting uh, for the for the cars to be uh, to be ready. Once the cells are uh, ready to be sent from the company, uh, they are they are received by the facility where the cells are going to be administered. Uh, for currently for Axi cell, and also for uh, CTL 019, the the bag which is sent from the company is thawed at the bedside and infused to the patient. For the lyso cell. The lysocell, remember, it is uh, sent in two separate vials. One is the CD4 positive cells, and the other one is the CD8 positive cells. These cells are then thawed, and the appropriate amount is drawn up into syringes, and so that we can get the one-to-one -one ratio, and that is administered uh, separately to the patient.